what's up guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you six tips on how you can achieve photorealistic interior renders let's get to it okay tip number one that's using high poly 3d models i bet you've seen renders where the models used are so realistic that you think that it's a real picture the chairs, the doors, the windows, everything that they use in the model is so realistic and down to detail that you just think it's almost a real image that you're looking at. That's because the artists, they made use of high poly 3D models. Now, these are 3D models that contain a higher <coughs> polygon count than others. That just means that they are more detailed than others. I don't go into geek detail about what polygon count means in 3D modeling, but the more polygons that a model has, the more realistic and lifelike and the more detailed the model will appear compared to another model that is not as high in poly count. Take these two beds for instance that I have opened here in SketchUp. You can take a guess on which one looks more realistic. I'm guessing everybody is going to pick the one on the left because for sure it looks more like a real bed than the one on the right. The one on the right can be used for presentation purposes only, maybe just for the 3D model to just show your client. But for your 3D renders, I advise you use this one on the left because if you take a closer look at it, you can see it has all the wrinkles, all the folds, even down to the pillows are even super detailed. It almost looks like an early morning bed. Um, I used this particular bed for an interior render that I posted on IG a while ago. It really sold the idea of a real bed, trust me. You can check it out as it's up on the screen now. Really, really realistic bed. I really like it. Now, you can get these 3D models from the 3D warehouse or any other 3D modeling website. I have a video on my channel where I show people how to look for 3D models like this because there's a real complaint that 3D warehouse doesn't have detailed components. But I'm here to say that that's cap and it does in my video in my channel i show people how to search it in real detail how to get this high poly 3d model i can also check other 3d websites such as turbo squid 3d sky for other 3d models that you can want to use okay tip number two that is capturing the little details by this i'm talking about the details that you can find in a real space that's your door fixtures the door joints the cabinetry even the tile skirting, all those little details that we see in real life that we tend to skip in 3D modeling either due to time or any certain factor. You need to consider them to make your model look photorealistic because when you think of a real life setting, you think of all these things and if they don't appear in your render, your render doesn't look realistic. As simple as that. I want to take this kitchen model that I made for instance, I had to consider a lot into this. For example, I have my tile skirting here matching the same material as the floor tiles. I also had to put light fixtures as well to note the electrical engineer where to put the light fixture to control the various lights that I have in the space. And also in my cabinetry, I had to model all the door handles, model all the joinery and also the gaps in the wooden joinery so that it won't just look simple and plain when rendering. All those things need to be really considered in modeling and also in the rendering phase so that your work can be as realistic as possible also in the city also there are so many details concerning this project uh, this project really took a lot of time i downloaded this particular artifact from the 3d warehouse another high quality model that made my work look very realistic so you can also consider this to make your work look realistic uh, there are so many resources that you can use to check you can check your own house for example things in your house you can um, duplicate them in your rendering and also go online and look at the latest joinery and latest fixtures in many files and then you can then use them in your work as well okay tip three that's using the right scale and proportion in your renders by scale i simply mean scale refers to anything concerning size the size of the object size of your models furniture doors materials even the scale of the materials is also considered so i'm going to take this office scene as my instance for this tip and over here you can already see what's wrong in this scene i have six chairs here but there's an odd one out someone that looks a little too big for the scene and that's because he's wrongly scaled and not in proportion to the work table that's in front of it and now if you take a look 
at this render that I'm going to make right now with this. Let me render this real quick. Now the render has begun and you can see that everything looks okay with this scene except for this big boy right here which is wrongly scaled in proportion to the other tables and the other chairs in this scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to scale this down so that it will be correctly sized so that this scene can look more realistic because nobody's going to believe that you're going to have a chair this big in comparison with other chairs if you're actually having to render out this space. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to just simply scale this down to meet the others and then once you've done that you can already see that the space already looks more realistic it's a more realistic office setting and when you render this this is what you're going to get like i said now it looks more like a uniform workspace uniform chairs everything correctly sized someone can sit down here comfortably swivel and turn and that's a pro tip that you can also get for your interior designs okay the fourth tip that i have for you guys is to study live reference images now i have three main sources where i get reference images from the number one the king is pinterest every designer i know uses pinterest pinterest is probably the most important tool for case studies and idea generation in design because you get on there and you see the beautiful things that people have been making for example if you take a look now i'm on, right now i'm on pinterest i'm taking a look at interior design living room i can see various interior designs that people have done in the country outside the country different ideas people share ideas and you can use this as a palette for your designs you can have your mood board here you can have your sofa your furniture type of everything here i also like to check architectural digest interiors also for bespoke classy interior design ideas that i can also use for my projects as well you can have some here people use colors different ideas that you can take you need to study these and then have a knack for how it is in real life you can see where part of the three or five tips that i've shared are both they are all into these real life projects. For example, this is Design's top 10 interiors of 2016. That's almost seven, how many years ago? That's a long time ago. But you can still see that it's relevant today. For example, look at the light fixtures that they used over here, the light switches that they used over here. You can see the details in the joinery. You can see the details in the floorboards, the cabinetry. You can look at all these things and generate ideas from them. And this is a pro tip that people use in order to generate ideas. Okay, that brings me on to tip number five, which is using high quality materials. Now, materials can either make or break your interior renders. If you use terrible materials, you're going to have a terrible render. Trust me. No matter how good your lighting is, no matter how good your composition is, your materials make or break your image as good as the rest of the other things. Now, for example, I want to take, take a look at this picture that I found on Pinterest. Another idea for a wooden floor. I'm guessing this is the herringbone pattern for those that are into wooden floors. So you can see how detailed and, and realistic this floor is. This is a live picture, actually. It's not a render. But for sure, you're, you're going to look for look at this to get an idea of how you're going to do yours in your 3D software. And this is a no gatekeeping zone. So I'm going to show you guys my plug for 3D rendering materials. And I'm going to show you guys Ambient CG. This is a free material, online material library where you can get different materials. Any material you can think of, you can get it. You can just come here and use the filters to search for them for example we're going to look for this exact wooden floor so i'm going to go to wood and i'm going to go to floor and you can already see the options that are coming up the options that's coming up and this looks closer to what we have here so i'm simply going to select this and just go down yeah that looks closer to it and then you can see you have a range of options here. This is not a sponsored post. I'm just giving them a shout out because it's free and then it really helps a lot of people. 
so you have options to download it they are pbr materials if you want to know what are pbr materials click the link in the pop-up above i made a whole video on what pbr materials are and how you can use them using vray for sketchup i use them for all my renderings interiors exteriors and i've never had a bad complaint from any client or any colleague so far because of how chic and nice the render has come out using these materials you can already see the detail in this using the different maps that come with it and i also suggest you download minimum of 4k materials except if your render is below 2k quality you can either use png or jpeg but just use high quality materials minimum of 4k minimum of 2k depending on your quality maximum of 8k if you're going for poster size but use quality materials and trust your renders are going to be super photorealistic. That brings me on to the last but not the least tip, which is practice, practice and practice your fundamentals, guys. Fundamentals of rendering are lighting, materials and composition. Once you practice these three, trust me, your renders are going to take a real boost in photorealism. I have a lot of resources on my channel. Although I have a little videos, but I'm still planning on building my playlist to be greater than this. I have a playlist on tips, which I'm going to add this to lighting and materials. Composition playlist is coming up very soon. I have, a vi I have videos where I show how to work on various things in quick seconds. And then once you practice with these videos and other videos as well, I'm pretty sure you guys will get your photorealistic boost that you want to listen. You want to get. I want to thank you guys for helping me to 3,000 subscribers, even with this little amount of videos. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Do make sure to check out other videos in my channel. And also, want to subscribe to this channel, hit the circle on the left side of the screen. And if you want to check out the previous video, hit the right side of the screen. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.